it was fairly early way. Even knowing we were going to get a long main event, I was like, we are not going to be going live at midnight. That would be my assumption. So Roman Reigns and Cody. Oh, we Rhodes. have to make time for these entrances. Well, yeah. Once the entrances Jeez. went through, I was like, you know what? Maybe not. So, dude, the lights go down for Cody's theme, and there is a audible roar of this crowd. I can say this. Seeing a full year of this undisputed championship a hot baby face, a hot heel, the one big match. This felt like we are not debating what was the main event of WrestleMania this year. It was, with all due respect to the tag match last night, this was the main event of WrestleMania. It felt like the main event of WrestleMania, and it felt like a big main event of WrestleMania. Yeah. And this crowd, they were here for this match, and they exploded when they realized Cody's coming out. Completely agreed. Yeah, Um I mean, we we can always think back, you know, to a month ago or six weeks ago, and, and the debate about whether or not it should be Sami Zayn. If, it, if Sami Zayn had the spot, I think the reaction would have been just as big. But um, I think this allowed you to parlay the Sami Zayn momentum into the first night, where you got an equally, you know, similarly big reaction. And Cody has done such a tremendous job building the story from last year to this year, and he just has that presence about him that feels like such a WrestleMania main event level presence. It it completely felt like a big, big, big WrestleMania main event. Yeah. This guy looked like a million bucks walking out. And coincidentally, um, that was uh at minimum the cost of this pyro pyro display for Cody <laughs> as it went off. And he he goes ringside, and there is Brandy, his daughter Liberty, his mother, his sister Teal, and then Brody Jr. Negative one, unmasked on WWE television. And he gets Cody's weightlifting belt. This was, uh, to me, one of the, the coolest moments of any of these nights. It was so awesome. So awesome. Of course, this is the uh, weightlifting belt with all the names of the promotions that he's worked in um, through, through his excursion, including Smash AEW. Wrestling, Toronto's own Smash Wrestling, making it to mm -hmm. the main event of WrestleMania. Yeah, we we had said whatever lucky kid is going to get that. I mean, you know, is is a very lucky kid, and and he chose the great, the best choice. Obviously, and Michael Cole explaining as well who he is, and mm -hmm. Bro Brody Brody Lee's son as well. Yeah. So that that was nice for for people that might not have so realized awesome. it. Yeah. So we we have gotten both negative one and Preston Vance on masking within months. Oh uh, well, you know, if Ray can you know have a career with the mask on afterwards, and so can negative one. Then we go to Roman's entrance and there are six pianists at the entrance and they, they were terrific. Like this was, uh, I mean, this was my parents' dream of what I would have become in, uh, when I was eight years old. Going to One of the lessons. six pianists for the Roman Reigns WrestleMania entrance. Those yeah. were their hopes for me. I, I let them down. And then we shift to Roman's regular theme and he comes out with Paul Heyman. And oh, what a beautiful Sokoa. I mean, yeah. like the, the Roman Reigns entrance is, is really like pretty great uh, anyway, but to see it on a big stage, I know I've seen it before, but tonight it just felt almost like the greatest it's ever been, especially maybe because I had the knowledge that this might have been the last time I was seeing it, seeing him with the championship. Um, so <laughs> there is so much heat. They are in the ring. Samantha Irvin did a fantastic job of introducing them and, you know, it. Cole loves the uh, it's a big fight feel like that was the appropriate description for when this bell rang and this crowd went nuts as the bell rang and they just go face to face and we start off the match and early on Cody is caught after a disaster kick with a power bomb and Reigns is just playing with him. He's waving at the Rhodes family and then Sokoa gets involved nailing Cody in the ribs with a chair shot behind the ref's back that sets up a drive-by and Cody would be clutching at his ribs and always like checking in with the ribs and this would become uh, a handicap that he would have to deal with. Then Rhodes tr uh, gets tripped by Sokoa and finally Sokoa steals the weightlifting belt and I wish they had got a shot of him like ripping it away from, from uh, Brody Jr. Uh, Me too. He gets the weightlifting belt and he just starts whipping Cody and Dan Engler, the referee does not see it, but he hears it and he turns around. And when he ejects solo Sokoa, you had 67,000 people lose their minds. It sounded like 80. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I mean, uh, we, we can all assume that he took it from Brody Lee, uh, Brody jr. Uh, but if, if we had seen that, if everybody in attendance had seen oh, that, even man, more the heat would have been that much nuts. crazier. Absolutely. 
So Sokoa is leaving, and listen, there's so much praise that you can throw around here. Paul Heyman's facial reaction when Sokoa was leaving, he's got this look like he is frightened, like this was not supposed to happen. Oh, God. Yeah. And Reigns gets the weightlifting belt, and Engler tries to stop him from using it. So Cody nails him with a kick and hits the crossroads, and we get our first major near fall. And this audience was ready. Like, 15 minutes in, yeah, we can wrap this up. Cody wins. No. Reigns kicks out and he comes back. There's a urinagi by Reigns called the rock bottom, but then the Superman punch is avoided and Cody by avoiding the Superman punch, Roman is leaned over and Cody hits the pedigree. Mm -hmm. The heel turn. The heel turn. Remember he said that if he ever hits that move, that would be the signal. (laughs) Don't you remember? This was one of Cody's (laughs) crazy. Listen, I feel like that's a completely different guy. Like I, I, I that, that that was Devonte. I, I don't really. Cody Cody broke down how he had actually turned back in AEW. Okay, he explained <sighs> this to uh, Ariel Hawani and then said, like, what does a heel do? A heel takes something that the audience wants away from them, and they all wanted me to turn heel. So I told them I would never turn heel. I was taking that away from them. And then he follows that explanation <laughs> as he's hearing it himself, explaining it to Ariel. He's like, maybe that was too nuanced. Yeah, Cody, maybe it was. <laughs> maybe it was. If you have to explain to people what the purpose of this is. Yes. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a much better fit that he is in now, several years lit, removed. So Reigns then hits a Superman punch after... Cody goes for the disaster kick and the disaster kick is met with a Superman punch in midair. And the replay of this was amazing. And then the replay shows Heyman and he's not looking at the two. He just assumes it's over and he's counting one, two, and then three. And when he doesn't hear the bell, his look of just shock was amazing. Mm, His face. I'm so glad this replay showed this. It was great. Yeah, they got to put a camera on him just in the corner, like the whole time. His facial expressions in every Roman Reigns match, especially the big ones like this, are always fantastic just to watch. Cody applies a figure four, and Michael Cole is screaming at the top of his lungs. Dusty Rhodes is looking down at his baby boy. It was amazing, dude. For Michael Cole, remember like two years ago, he like blew the finish of the call at WrestleMania. And it was like, man, this poor guy, like it's like the biggest call of the year. And you messed it up thinking it was in your fall. And then he just he had a great weekend. Honestly, like he had a bunch of like great calls. And I feel Mm -hmm. this is like the culmination of. Michael Cole at ease over this last uh, nine months. And for his sake, I hope it stays that way. But I, I really feel like a shift. I mean, there, I think it's been happening for a long, long time now. But I mean, for years, for really the better part of his entire career, Michael Cole was seen as like the the corporate choice, the one that the company wanted to replace Jim Ross and the guy who missed calls moves. And, you know, um, but I think over like especially in recent years and especially since Hunter took over and he and Michael Cole found out about um you know Wikipedia, um people I think are starting to really give the man the respect he deserves. He and, he and I think really enough stories that have come out that like, dude, this guy's job sucks for for mm-hmm. for a lot of these 25 years he's been in this company it's a brutal job to have and this guy in your ear for all this long and this guy's lasted he outlasted the guy in his ear at least temporarily yeah, yeah. so reigns then applies the guillotine and he puts him in his closed guard and cody pops his head out drops his ground and pound and then cody misses reigns and nails the referee both are down from a double clothesline spot and he goes for the crossroads to Roman when the Usos appear and they shot this really well. So it's like, you didn't see the, the Usos coming and they break it up with super kicks and they hit a one D when Owens and Zayn storm the ring place goes nuts. Owens gets in a stunner on reigns. Zayn hits the Haluva kick to reigns and they brawl with the Usos into the crowd and take them out of the mix. Cody with his remaining life, crawls on top of Roman and Roman gets his shoulder up at the last second. They get to their feet and they're just trading big blows. This is like the end of a a Rocky fight where they're just throwing these exaggerated overhands at one another and the crowd's just living with and dying with each one. It was one of the most intense yay boos I've, I've ever seen in professional wrestling. It's like the audience felt 
it was almost like they were hot this whole match. But I think in the back of their head, it was like, we know we're going to see the Usos. We're no, we know we're going to get Owens and Zayn. So once they had done their portion of the match, yep. now we are on the precipice of the end. Mm-hmm. And that's where they are ready to explode. <laughs> so he avoids the Superman punch and he nails Roman with the jabs and hits the bionic elbow. Hits the crossroads, holds on, hits a second crossroads, rolls, and he's going to hit the third when Heyman gets on the apron. And there in the corner is the returning Solo Sokoa, who stops Cody in his tracks with the Samoan spike. And from there, Roman Reigns spears Cody and Reigns pins Cody in 34 minutes and 29 seconds. One of the longest matches in WrestleMania history. And Roman prevails. Cody is dejected. And Heyman yells to Reigns, you are WrestleMania. And this crowd is aghast. I could not believe it. (laughs) We've been, you know, in our previews, we've been talking about this match for weeks. We had a call yesterday from somebody saying, hey, like, are the chances of Cody winning lessened because of a babyface win in the first night? I laughed, okay? I laughed. I didn't laugh out loud. I laughed in my head. Impossible. This is about as much of a slam dunk of a build as I think you could have called um, ever. You know, more so than Mark Briscoe in Sabocho, more so than Eddie Kingston, Claudio Castagnoli, more so than really anything. Um, who, who had they have never, ever, ever been able to find somebody like a Roman Reigns be this dominant of a champion. And they've certainly not been able to find somebody to be able to match that level of intensity at all until they found Cody Rhodes. And the timing happened to work out that they managed to build this to the main event of WrestleMania on the second night. They gave up on a, on a baby face, like a Sami Zayn in order to get to Cody and they did not execute. I, was stunned i could not believe it i was holding up for a dusty finish and of course if there was a you know an appropriate night for one of those um if there was an appropriate night for the triple h signature and then some sort of swerve afterwards it would have been tonight it did not happen i'm stunned i i still am completely stunned and it was um incredibly i would say deflating but i also can't get mad at the experience i had I thought this was one of the great WrestleMania main events of all time. It was ride, phenomenal. The ride that they took us on. Um, and I think so much of it is because I knew that finish was coming. But even like I was so sure of this finish that it was almost like a, a an Undertaker like um, streak, you know, back when the streak was alive. I mean, we know Taker's winning, but if they can suspend our disbelief long enough to think that somebody else could win, then okay, then I'll, I'll really get into it. And my shock when Cody lost was as big as maybe the Undertaker losing his streak. Um, but it was an incredible professional wrestling viewing experience for me. What about you? I, I thought it was an outstanding match among the, like really among the most heated matches you would think of in, in WrestleMania history. I, I would say like, it was that incredible, this crowd. Um, I think that, I think they missed the timing on it. I think that this was like Fuck, the I idea that you, it. you build it for a, a bigger day. Oh, Maybe maybe you'll come close to this. I don't know if you will hit such a peak as this where the family is there. Like we watch two families leave these WrestleMania weekend shows disappointed that the person did not win the title. I cannot fathom the super card of honor finish with Mark Briscoe. So this one, I mean, I just I don't know what you could do that makes the next one bigger. And yes, if they do it at SummerSlam, if they do it at WrestleMania next year. I'm sure it'll be a big moment and you will get people stating, oh, everyone doubted it. Everyone doubted it. This was what they did. Like this was Gato's booking for for a long time as well and building to that eventual Naito uh, victory as well. So listen, they're they're in a position. They are. There is no financial penalty for delaying this. They are. It's just making uh, creative calls. Uh, But when Amanda Huber is tweeting out that was the wrong call, I'm going to agree with Amanda Huber on on this particular night. You had everything in a row. Uh, It was just perfectly made. And 
Oh, the number yeah. 1000 is obviously just a intoxicating number. Those zeros, they just were so close. We're so close to a thousand. I just, I've said for months, I just don't think you can get any more. This is title reign. It has been great. They've got a phenomenal story attached to it. I'm sure they have a story coming out of this. I just think like ultimately this title, this title reign is only as big as the person that unseats him. And tonight everything was perfect. It was like we said that about Drew, and this was that times 50. Yeah. Everything was perfect. The injury comeback, the rumble win, bypassing yeah. Sammy, this sold out so, two nights. We said that about Sammy. Now, I, I think we all agree that Cody was probably the, the right choice. Because Cody checked all those other boxes that you wanted out of a guy leading your company as the face, of as the champion, a guy who's great in mainstream press, a guy who looks like a million bucks, a guy who's good with media, um, a guy who's, you know, packing houses here, you know, for, uh, and doing ratings and, and everything. What more possible could they be looking for in somebody to, you know, take to the next level of a Roman Reigns? I, I think they're going to, Continue with it. I think it like Cody's story has to end with this title win. But are you going to have so many things in place that you recreate tonight? Maybe it's maybe. the risk. They must be confident. Or John, maybe they want to have Reigns not just get to one thousand. Maybe they want to have him chase Bruno. Okay, He's so I think Bruno two thousand eight hundred uh, days we're we're headed towards. So, but, but uh, this Reigns going to be a whole lot longer, perhaps. Yeah, I, I am sure there's a, a lot behind this this booking decision and, and going with it. Oh, because I just I, I'm I'm flabbergasted. I still am. I really like they must be pretty damn confident in their ability to book. They must, you know, see. I, I mean, the word is they have a lot planned uh, ahead. And maybe this is something we'll look back a year from now and say that was the right call. They made that pop that much bigger tonight. Um, But it's a risk. You're always taking a risk. Injuries happen. You know, people just like, hey, man, like leave this industry for whatever reason. And you can't finish these stories. It's and, you know, Cody is, you know, fresh back on WWE television. So he has this freshness to him. But like this guy's turning like n not to say he's like, you know, near the end of his career or anything, but like he's turning 38, which is like I feel people don't realize he's like he feels younger on television like th these are prime years that like, if you're going to get that run in, um, I, I, I just don't know how much more you do with Roman at this point beyond you're a bulletproof company that you could put the title on just about anybody. And you are, it's just a degree of how profitable you are going to be. And the guy who has the title is not dictating your finances. So it's ultimately a creative choice. More importantly, I'm very curious to know what this means for the entire roster as a whole in our preview we t we were we were so sure <laughs> that they were going to go with the new champion that we were talking about all the possibilities for what they could go to afterwards because it completely refreshes the entire division the entire roster you can do cody versus such and such cody versus you know gunther cody versus logan paul well what are those matches now for roman reigns he's gone through pretty much everybody and so. the elephant in the room in all of this is who is going to be leading this this creative like yeah, hmm. if you're going of the assumption that Paul Levesque is the person that is continuing to spearhead creative, I think you are left with like optimism that th the story is going to go. But you do not know that and where this company is going to fit and what is Vince McMahon's role going to be. And I just Jeez. think that you have to go with that impression as well, that that is a possibility of all of this. Um, it, it, this entire company could look very different in 24 to 48 hours. I suppose so, but even going by like the Vince McMahon metric, like what what would he not want about about a Cody Rhodes victory tonight? You know, you you don't know. I mean, the the argument certainly would be, oh, you know, with Cody, it's like he was brought in as a star last year and treated like it, and that was months mm -hmm. before the the changeover as well. And I don't know what the, what the thinking was tonight beyond hey, it's. <laughs> We, can, is, we also can't blame every bad booking decision just on Vince, you know, like, no, it's like, listen, capable. if, if this, and you know, for the, the public stance is that Paul Levesque is leading all of this. And I'd question yeah. his booking on this one for sure. Like you, oh, the, the work is to get to a moment like this and then you pull the trigger and yeah. they, they were not trigger happy on this night. They just want to, you know, they are, they are up huge at the table and they just want to go double or nothing, pardon the pun, but yeah. uh, continue to grow it. Yeah. I mean, I, I really hate to like speak 
negatively at all about like that match. It really, to me, was one of the great WrestleMania main events of all time. I'm only disappointed because I wonder if we'll cont- continue to think that way in the future. Because we tend to just remember title changes, significant title changes. When we think about, you know, legendary WrestleMania. Well, it was going to be a changing of the guard kind of match. Like here is a guy winning yeah. his first title. He is someone that you look at not just as a guy we're putting on the belt for three months, but a guy mm-hmm. that you could see being th- their successor like that. So is- ra- and rather than this being the end of a story, does it just become another chapter in the middle of a, you know, bigger book? Yeah. And, and is there any, sort of loss of faith in Cody. And we're going to see because this is the guy that is out there doing the house shows. And we have seen what impact Cody has had on live events. And you're not going to have Roman at all of these house shows. And does he, not to say Cody, it becomes nothing, but even if he loses a bit of the edge, like he came into this red hot. And if he's just like a hot baby face, it's like, that. that's great. But have you, did you take some of the steam off of Cody when he failed in such a major match? And maybe not, maybe he, Maybe he is fine from this. He's a great, great talker. He'll be positioned highly. I would say coming out of this, I'm more leaning towards like backlash being maybe like Cody, Owen, Zane against the Usos and Roman or Sokoa in there as well, rather than a title defense at backlash. So what a six man? Six man. Yeah. But what's at stake? You know, like, how do you, how do you bet best this? Like, this was the ultimate, you know, this was the, 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 the final stage. This was end game. And the Avengers failed. I'm not um, arguing this one. I'm not. I don't have a defense for you. It's the, like oh, they man. have their reasoning for it, and yeah, the, the let it play it. out crowd will uh, have that reason as as the the one. But to me, it was like, man, you you had the layup of all layups here. Like you did you did the work and didn't bask in the, in the in the glory at the end of it all, because this would have been, I think this is ultimately going to be a really well-remembered main event and a well-remembered WrestleMania these two nights. But to me, it would have been an all-time classic if this was Cody's big win in such a um, significant moment. And the significance of this guy winning and the next day, it's a new era for the company potentially as well. I just think the whole history uh, will be tied to this weekend of the company going from one phase to the next. And this is the guy leading them into that next era. We have had some tremendous WrestleMania coverage all week long at the Post Wrestling Cafe interviews with Brandon Thurston, Dave Meltzer, Speedball Mike Bailey, uh, Mania previews. We had uh, lots of... Uh, Mania discussion all week long, and it will continue post mania. Uh, We will be back later this week with a special edition of Rewind Away covering CM Punk's interview on the art of wrestling from November of 2014. We're going to look back almost uh, nine years removed from a very pivotal interview that was the focus of a lawsuit years later. So we are going to go through that entire interview this Thursday. It's a special Thursday edition of the rewind away series and if you sign up it's six dollars to get you in the door access to all of our bonus shows and a month's worth of content and access to 127 editions of rewind away and all of our archives from drive to survive to interviews with oscar nominated uh documentarians uh we have it all on the post mcu Sunday. later and if you're you if you have to catch up on a lot of the wrestlemania week coverage we did reviews of gcw's blood sport the mark hitchcock memorial uh super card of honor from ring of honor of course so postwrestlingcafe.com video.postwrestling.com we appreciate your support take and that michael the, cole that's it Come um the, get your tickets now to the post wrestling cafe and for the others they're like six bucks these guys aren't worth that You can just subscribe to the YouTube channel free of charge 